In class, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at section 3.5 using uh, Euler diagrams to verify syllogisms. And we're going to be looking at pictures like this one, or trying to draw pictures like this one. So we're looking for a syllogism, which is valid, whenever its premises are all true, then the conclusion is also true. So the conclusion of a syllogism can be false, even though all the premises are true, then the syllogism is invalid. A very famous syllogism has to do with Socrates. They're the people who were thinking about these things as they sat around and did math all day. Uh, who said, all right, all people are mortal. Socrates is a person. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. So the, the goal here is to, sorry, let me go back. The goal here is to basically draw, it's kind of like a Venn diagram situation. Here we've got all mortals and people are inside the group of mortals. That's what this is saying. All people um, are mortal, mortal. So people are included by mortals. Then we're pointing out Socrates is a person, so he's in this people bubble. So Socrates is here in there as a person. So therefore, because he's in this circle, which is inside of this circle, he matches with mortal. That's what this is doing. So, uh, therefore, we've already had this uh, three dot thing I showed you in the last lesson, therefore is three dots. So, we gotta take a look at this picture. So, Euler diagram uh, to determine whether or not this is valid. So, all poets are good spellers. Dante is not a good speller. Therefore, Dante is not a good poet. So, let's talk about is this valid. So, here's um, good spellers. And it's saying all poets belong inside of the good speller circle. So, here's poets inside of good spellers. Dante is not a good speller. So that means Dante is out here. Here's Dante. Dante is not a good speller, which means, therefore, Dante is not, he can't be in here. This says all poets are good spellers. So this is a valid argument, uh, valid syllogism, based on the situation. Okay? So we're going to try to make a Euler diagram to show that the syllogism is invalid here. Sorry. Um, all tigers are meat eaters. Okay? So we want to have... Um, tigers be inside of meat eaters. Notice how I'm just circling it right here in the sentence. Simba is a meat eater. Okay, so Simba can be right here as a meat eater. Therefore, Simba is a tiger. Well, be careful. Simba's a meat eater. He's over here in the meat eater area, but did he happen to fall in there? Well, let's take a quick a look at the actual better computer graphic picture. Uh, here's, here's our meat eaters. Here's all the tigers, they're in the subset of being a meat eater. Now Simba, I know he's got the name of a, you know, a lion, but it's definitely not a tiger. Simba's a lion, not a tiger. They're both meat eaters. So this is an invalid argument, and here's a, here's a pictorial way of seeing that it's invalid. And again, I just doodle right here in the sentence, here's tigers, they're of the subset meat eaters. Well, Simba is a meat eater, okay? Hopefully that's making a little sense for us. So let's take a look here. I've got uh, all credit cards are made of plastic. So credit cards are in the subset of plastic. Okay? This card is not a credit card. Okay, well, this statement we've got to be a little careful about because not a credit card just means it's not here. It could be here or it could be out here. It says, therefore, this card is not made of plastic. Well, that means... This one would be valid. That would make this valid down here. But what about this guy? What about debit cards? So this card is not a credit card. Is it a debit card? Is it made of plastic? So here, this statement does not exactly hold true um, to be, so that this is an invalid argument based on the picture that I just drew for you. Okay, and again, the, the counter example would be debit card. Debit card is also made of plastic. so. Obviously, this is not a true statement. So let's talk about this one here. So we want to complete the syllogism so that it is valid and the conclusion is true. Here we've got some laws are fair. All laws should be enforced. Okay, some laws are fair. So here's, here's what's happening. We've got some laws are in the subset of being fair laws. And then it says that all fair laws should be enforced. So some laws are fair. I actually drew that 
probably the wrong direction. In fact, I know I did. So here, here, let me let me cancel this picture out a little bit better. So here, there's two types of loss. There's fair loss, which is actually I had my picture backwards. There's fair loss, which is going to be of the subset loss. Okay. So here we've got fair loss, and they're part of loss. In other words. This insinuates that some laws are fair, which must mean that there, there are other laws that are not fair. Okay, and then it says all fair laws should be enforced. Okay, so that means that these fair laws are being enforced. So our conclusion should be something about if a law is enforced, it must be a fair law or something like that. Okay, so here is... Uh, is a little bit bigger picture of what I've got going on. So we've got our fair laws, we have the laws that are actually enforced, and then there's all laws. Okay. So, oops, sorry. So what I want to do is come up with something like um, if a, therefore, a law that is enforced must be fair. So probably the most accurate thing we could say about this is that, therefore, there are some laws that are not enforced. Okay. Or um, something like a fair law, therefore a fair law, is enforced. or Something, something along, so you're, there's multiple different options and you're going to be selecting from some. It's not going to be as vague as this in your homework because you're going to have multiple choice options. But uh, something that makes sense, basically, if I say it's in here, there's a fair law, then it is enforced. Or um, if something is enforced, then it's a law. So if I have something that's enforced here, then it's a law. So it's all talking about coming up with a answer choice that is inside one of your sub-circles inside the outer circle that you drew. Okay. So if you have any questions, if that's unclear, just ask me in the Ask My Instructor feature of the lab. All right. Good luck on this section.